Hello everyone and welcome back. In this new lesson on Angular Reactive Forms, we are going to introduce the notion of a synchronous form field validator. So all of the form validators that we have been using so far have been synchronous. This is, for example, the case of the required validator, which ensures that the field is mandatory, or minimum length and maximum length. All of these validators mark the field as in error immediately after the user interacts with the field. For example, whenever we type in values in an input box, these validators are going to get triggered and the validity state of the form field is going to get affected by the latest input. Now let's say that besides these immediate synchronous client-side validators, we would also want to validate if the course title already exists in our database. So we would not want to allow in this platform to have two courses with the exact same title. So that is a good example of an asynchronous validator that requires an asynchronous operation, such as for example a backend call, in order to determine if the field is valid or not. So let's implement this asynchronous validator. This is going to use our Angular courses service that we are using here to load courses in our application in order to do a backend call and check if the course title already exists. We could have a dedicated backend call for that here in our service, but let's implement a simple validator using here the already existing find all courses method. When the user blurs the input field here in our form, we are going to do a backend call, retrieve the courses, loop through them and check if the title already exists. In order to implement our asynchronous course title validator, we are going to create here a new file. So here under the source app validators folder, let's go ahead and let's create here a new file that we're going to call course title validator.ts. And inside it, we're going to create our validator function. Let's go ahead and let's define here a new function that we're going to call course title validator. Just like in the case of synchronous validators, the return type of this function is going to be a function. So let's annotate this with the type async validator function. So this is a function that returns another function when called. The return function here is going to be the actual validator function. So this function here, course title validator, is just used to create new instances of our validator function. Let's then implement here our validator function as the output of course title validator. So as we have explained, the output is going to be a function. This function is going to take as input a control of type abstract control and it's going to return as its output either an errors object or null in case that there are no errors found. So this is very similar to the case of synchronous validators. The difference is that because the validator is asynchronous, we are going to be returning either a promise or an observable instead of a plain value. In order to validate a value, we need to do a backend call and for that we need our courses service. So let's go ahead and pass it in here as an input argument of course title validator. With the courses service, we're going to go ahead and we're going to call find all courses that we have available here. From here, we are going to use the RxJS pipe operator in order to map the returned value, which will be an array of courses, into the output of our validator function. So the output of our validator function is not going to be a synchronous value. Because this validator is asynchronous, we can return here an observable. So Angular is going to subscribe to the value of this observable and it's the value of this observable that is going to determine if the field value is valid or not. So the observable is going to emit an error object in case that the field has an error in it and it's going to emit null if the field has a valid value. In order to determine if the field has a valid value, we need to search for this courses array for a course with the exact same title. Let's then do here a plain array find in our courses array. 
and let's search inside our courses array for a course with the exact same title as typed in our form control. So let's access here the course title, which is under the value description, and let's compare this with the control value. So let's indent this so that we can read it better. We're going to access the control and then we're going to access the value. And in order to make a better comparison between these two strings, let's convert both of them to lowercase. This is going to return true for this comparison in case that there are only uppercase and lowercase differences between the title of the course typed by the user and the title on the database. So now we have here a course that might match the same title or not. Let's then go ahead and let's test the value that we have returned. So if there is a course with the same title, then that's an error. We need to return an error object. We're going to return an error object as the output of our observable that is going to contain here a property called title exists that we're going to set to true. And if there is no course on the database with the exact same title, let's go ahead and let's return null. This is going to tell Angular that the form field value is valid. And with this, we have finished the implementation of our asynchronous validator. So let's now see how we're going to plug it in here in our form model. So here we were using this simplified syntax that is meant for a field only with synchronous validators. So let's go ahead and let's quickly refactor this into using here a configuration object for the title form control. So here we are going to pass in a property called validators and here we are going to pass in an array of validators which are the validators that we had defined before. So these are the synchronous validators. We can also define here another property called async validators and it's here to this property that we need to pass in this function course title validator. With this, Angular is going to call it and instantiate a validator and associate it to the title field. Now, one very specific thing for asynchronous validators. We only want the asynchronous validators to be called sparingly. We don't want to do a backend call each time that the user types in a character in an input field. So in order to avoid the asynchronous validator from being triggered, every time that user types in a key, let's go ahead and let's use the update on property and let's set it to blur. This way, the user is going to be able to type in the course title here in the form input field, tab away to the next field in the form and only at that moment will our backend call be made. Now, we also want to show to the user an error message in case that the title is already being used. So let's go ahead and let's add here a material error directive here to our material form field and let's add the text. This title is already being used and let's make sure that this is only shown in case that there is an error. We are going to be applying here ng if and now we need to access the course title field check for the presence of any errors and we also want to make sure that the title exists error is present before showing this message to the user. In order to access the course title, let's go ahead and define here a getter in our component. We are going to be calling the getter course title and we are going to be accessing here our form. We're going to be accessing the controls object and from there we're going to be accessing the title property. Let's return this as the output of our getter. And with this, we have fixed here the compilation error that we had. And now our form is ready to be tested out. Actually, before doing so, there is still a small problem here in the definition of our form model. So if you remember, the course title validator function needs to receive here a reference to the course's service. So let's go ahead and let's inject it here in our constructor. And let's go ahead and pass it in as the argument of our call to course title validator. 
And with this, our asynchronous validator is ready to be tested out. So if we start typing in here a title, we are going to see that no backend calls are made. If we blur the field by clicking away from it, we are going to see that the backend call is going to get triggered, but the form is not marked as in error. This is normal because there is no course with this title in our database. However, if we type in here an existing course title and we click away from it, a second backend call is going to get made to validate the title and as we can see the error is being thrown and the message is getting displayed to the user as expected. Let's now continue the implementation of our multi-step form by adding some more commonly used form fields. Let's talk about date pickers, checkboxes, text areas and other controls. 